In this throwback video, I explain what is FPUC. What is FPUC Retro? How do you get FPUC? How do you escalate benefits? And how do you get more unemployment for UI, PUA, and FPUC? Enjoy this overnight LA throwback video on unemployment. What will really happen to FPUC? Will it expire for good? Or will Congress save it with a different amount? Hey everybody, this is LA Lake with a second stimulus check and stimulus package update today with really great, exciting, big news about unemployment assistance, FPUC, UI, PUA, with confirmation all across the board this Sunday morning about the actual extension of FPUC. Boy, I can't get any better than this. But where's the amount going to land? That is the big twist. So let me get right to the details. Sunday morning was like a knight in shining armor uh, as Mitch McConnell was thrown to the curb and Larry Kudlow and Steve Mnuchin took center stage and basically said on Sunday morning talk radio or broadcast news, there's going to be an extension of FPUC. The Republicans' proposal for the second stimulus check packages will be introduced Monday morning, and it will include an extension of FPUC, but at a reduced weight rate. So let me get to the details and explain to you where this is all heading. As you know, the Democrats have a proposal for the extension of FPUC staying exactly as it is, $600 per week, on top of UI and PUA benefits until January 2021. Friday, Nancy Pelosi and, Mitch, uh, and Chuck Schumer both were asked about the $600 amount, and they said they are not negotiating it. It's going to stay the same way. Uh, in the last week, Steve Mnuchin and Mitch McConnell have gone all over the place with this. Without spending 18 minutes on going the Steve versus Mitch uh, battle story, which I really don't care about, ultimately Mitch McConnell's silliness was thrown aside. And late Friday, Mitch headed home and Steve Mnuchin took center stage. What he did was he went with the chief of staff to, the, to, to Congress, met with congressional Republicans about the extension of FPUC, told press he was coming, appeared for press on the Capitol steps, when entering the building and appeared on Capitol steps when leaving the building and said, we have an agreement. We are ready to go. And the extension of FPUC will be introduced Monday on behalf of the Republicans. Boy, really, really great, great, great news. So first of all, FPUC is not going to die a, a, a sudden death. Two, FPUC has fundamentally expired, fundamentally expired. So if you are in a state and you're receiving FPUC benefits on a weekly basis, you're not going to get it for each week that it takes for the Republicans and the Democrats to pass the bill. I have to make that very, very clear to you. So you're not going to get FPUC potentially last week, this coming week, and potentially a week after that. The reason is we have two weeks until the bill that FPUC is in will be approved. The proposal from the Republicans is being introduced Monday morning. And so we have two working weeks until Congress is out of session, August 6th, August 7th, August 8th. I want you to be prepared that in the worst case scenario, there would be two weeks in which FPUC is not landing in your bank account if you're currently on it as part of UI or PUA. There's the potential that it's done sooner than that, but we really don't know. Ultimately, the question is, what is the amount? So let's get right to it. The Democrats have said it's staying at $600. The Republicans have said, we want to reduce it. That still will be the proposal. Larry Kudlow, um, who has that crazy position name, director of US National Economic Council, appeared on CNN this morning. And he says, it's all done. The $1,200 check is coming. It's going to be part of the new package. He says it's going to include a eviction moratorium and a boost of weekly unemployment benefits, which stopped over this weekend. 
He would not answer the amount, though. Um, the check is there. The reemployment benefits is there. The retention bonus is there. There'll be breaks, tax credits, and more. It'll be a very well-rounded package. Uh, Steve Mnuchin, appearing on Fox Sunday Morning News, said the same thing and reasserted the 70% ret uh, unemployment benefits rate of FPUC. More about that in a second. In a second. Pelosi says the reason, as said, uh, the Sunday morning as well. The reason we had $600 was its simplicity in f figuring out 70% of people's wages. People don't make all make a salary. They make wages and sometimes they have it varies. So why don't we just keep it simple? I love what Nancy Pelosi is saying. So let me explain what's happening with this amount. First, we know it's going to extend it. Second, we know it's going to get extended by August 8th or August 9th at the latest. Third, we know you there may be a lapse of benefits for two weeks for unemployment uh, of FPUC because it's, 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 it has now expired. And so if this bill takes two weeks to pass, you're not going to get the money. Finally, the amount is really up in arms. It likely is going to land somewhere between $300 and its current $600 amount. Why are they doing this? A hot mess is why they're doing this. Leading economists say that this is not well-rounded. It is not grounded in any financial data. What are economists saying? They're basically saying that when you're doing a second stimulus package, you don't risk things. You don't hope you did the math correctly and pay people less to be cheap because ultimately if you make a mistake on the calculation and undercompensate someone, that will push America's economy over the financial cliff and create an economic disaster. On the other hand, if you overcompensate someone, it's not a bad situation for anyone. Overcompensation doesn't do anything negative financially or from an economic standpoint. The 70% number was a topic of yesterday's LA Late uh, morning show, and viewers were in 100% agreement that this claim of 70% employment benefits coming out of Steve Mnuchin's mouth is simply ungrounded in any regard. Let me explain what he's saying here. Two weeks, a report came out that said two-thirds of Americans on unemployment benefits are receiving more on unemployment benefits than they were as employed. First, I don't believe the report. <laughs> Second, the report has not been verified anywhere else. The reason Steve Mnuchin loved the report and keeps on talking about it and signing it on a daily basis. But here's the problem with Steve Mnuchin's argument. It's fundamentally incorrect math. Steve Mnuchin doesn't like the report, which says people are overcompensated, meaning more than 100%. But Steve Mnuchin doesn't say, okay, let's fix it and pay them 100%. He says, no, let's fix it and underpay them at 70%. Well, wait a second. The report didn't say to underpay them. The report said they were just overpaid. So why are we suddenly cheaping out people and, 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 and undercompensating them? Nothing in the report called for or suggested or presented an economic reason for what Steve Mnuchin is doing. Steve Mnuchin chose a 70% number or percentage that absolutely, it's, it literally is pulled out of the sky. The 70% number is absolutely invented out of the sky. So where is he going with this? As Nancy Pelosi correctly says, calculating 70% of people's income is really, really a guessing game. Why it's a guessing game is the following. The report said that the two-thirds of Americans on unemployment benefits are getting more than when they were employed. Okay, well, how about the one-third that aren't? One-third are, under, under are undercompensated. And how about, how about the rest of them? Are they exactly a parody? So Steve Mnuchin is saying, we're going to move it up and move it down and move it around. You really don't know where the number's landing, Steve. But economists are warning the Trump administration broadly and clearly that if you undercompensation someone on FPUC, you risk destroying the American economy. Because ultimately, these people are on unemployment benefits. They're not going to make rent. They're not going to make utilities. They're not going to have food on the table. And you're going to sit back and say, well, we did a service to... Um, to the treasury and we didn't send out as much money as we should, as we needed to, but we protected the treasury. No, you protect the American economy, you protect the American citizen. You need to put the American citizen whole and putting them at 70% whole is not only not whole, it's also risky because who's to say that it is really 70%.
what's going to happen next week. So what's going to happen next week is that if you're on PUA or UI benefits, you're going to continue PUA or UI. I know this sounds a little confusing, and I'm going to stay, stay with me and I'll explain it right now. What happens this week is not that UI or PUA expires for people who are on it. <laughs> so let's pull out a paper and pencil. If you're on UI, you're not losing UI starting next week. If you're on PUA, you're not losing PUI, PUA starting next week. None of those are expiring anytime this month or next month. So, you know, let's all <laughs> just wipe our sweat. They're not going away next week. That's the first thing. It's if they're not going away because that's the law. It's not because I'm spinning it. It's not they're not going away. Um, PUA literally has you know twenty something more weeks if you've been on it for several weeks now. It has thirty something weeks in the program. PUA UI has a lot of weeks in the program. It has the initial number of weeks you went on. It has the state on extended benefits uh, additional weeks. It has the extension under the first stimulus package of. FPEUC. So all these programs that you're already on have a lot of weeks of extension still, while the Republicans and Democrats are arguing about this FPUC. The thing that has expired is the $600 per week. That's called FPUC. It's not called PUA. It's called FPUC. That has expired. So you won't see that coming in your bank account for one to three weeks, potentially, depending on the speed at which this is fixed by Congress. Will you get paid it retroactively? Million dollar question. I think you will, but I'm really guessing. Again, here we go with the bad news reporters. News reporters simply are loving talking about FPC on a daily basis. They really understand the broad scope of it. But they don't understand anything, anything else about it. So the fact that it's expired, they don't ask them, okay, are you paying those weeks that expired while you sit around and battle over this bill for the next two, three weeks? Haven't asked, they have not asked the question. So we don't know the answer. It is highly likely you would receive it, but I really don't know. Ultimately, the number of weeks of FPUC also has not been asked. I mean, these reporters are really making a hot mess this week. Um, Nancy Pelosi's proposal, well, the Democrats' proposal, has FPUC extended all the way to January 2021. So if you are on benefits, you would get the $600 per week all the way to January 2021 if you're impacted by COVID-19 every single week. How about the, de how about the Republicans? We don't know because they don't ask the question. I mean... <sighs> These, re these reporters are just not doing a good job. So when they have Mitch McConnell, when they have Steve Mnuchin on Fox, and they have Larry Kudlow on CNN, and they say, we're going to extend uh, unemployment benefits, we're going to save unemployment benefits, we're going to continue it. They follow up on a question, okay, what rate? Well, it's going to be 70%. And that's it. They get off the subject and they move to something else. Well, how about how many more weeks are you going to give us for FPUC? The reason I am addressing this concern, it is not a worry, but a concern, is because of that crazy guy from Kentucky. On Friday, he said, we're just going to do this on a temporary basis. Well, what does that mean? Uh, you know, FPUC is not a permanent bill. We already know that. Uh, the Democrats are only proposing it till January. That's temporary. Do you mean temporary a few days, a temporary a few weeks, temporary a few months? What, are you making me nervous again, Mitch? So... Ultimately, where we are is the White House is done with Mitch McConnell being the talking point of the second stimulus package for the point of the Republicans. They, he's out of the picture. Now, when he shows back into town, maybe he opens his mouth again on Monday. But he is not the talking point. Um, what I want you to understand and be informed about, I forgot to mention this in the first video today because there's so much going on, is that there are some, uh, there are some news sources <laughs> aka the New York Times, uh, that are really producing salacious material in the last 48 hours. Please stay away from it. They yesterday released what they called the leak, the leaked uh, Republican second stimulus package. And it was like two pieces of notes. 
Um, it's such hogwash. It really is. If you watch this channel, which I know you have, thank you for all the viewership, 10,000 new subscribers every two days. Um, you already know I've already covered all those details. I covered all those details because Steve Mnuchin came out on press on Friday and said, hogwash also. All these leaked claims of uh, the secret memo of the Republican uh, second stimulus package. Oh my God. It's, you know, it's, it's like it's Watergate. No, it's not Watergate. Um, and everything that was in there, Steve Mnuchin has either responded to or called hogwash. So, I mean, why is the New York Times two days later running the same claims with the same document again and causing some channels to, you know, have you uh, sit on the edge of your seat? I'm not doing that. I don't do scandalous allegations, unconf well, not, uh, denied <laughs> reports. I, I don't make videos on that. Um, what I do is I report news, I report facts, and I report um, it, Mitch interrupting my interview, my tapings with his helicopter. Uh, if you have questions in today's video, drop them in the comments below. Stay with me for rent assistance because, boy, I'm so excited. I'm really, uh, of all the things that made me so excited this morning, because it's been a tough day on me personally, um, I'm so excited about what I heard for rent assistance, rent moratoriums, for mortgage forbearance. Uh, I really did not, I, I was worried about this. I had been hammering this issue for so many days and finally it's coming. Uh, and it's coming from the Republicans. So stay with Alalite, stay informed, stay motivated, stay smiling, stay educated. Uh, and keep your hopes up because it's... <laughs> As long as Mitch is not allowed in the room, we're all good. And stay with LA for more.